to another Contrabassoon video. I'm Jonathan Westerling, and this time I have a chance to share with you a Mullenauer Contrabassoon. This is an up close and personal look at the specifics of this instrument, and afterwards I'll play it. I'll play a little Bach for you so that you can hear how it sounds. It's the same piece I played on my other Contrabassoon videos, so if you want to compare the sound of the individual horns, you can do that because I play the same piece on all of the videos. So without any further ado, this is a 1971 Mullenauer Contrabassoon manufactured by the Mullenauer and Sons Company in Kassel, Germany. They are still in business making contrabassoons and their US uh, distributor is in Boston. His name is Greg Henniger and he'd be happy to talk with you about the modern contrabassoon. Should you want to ask him questions about uh, what they currently sell, I'm not being paid by Mullenauer to make this video, but um, I happen to know Greg and, uh, and I'm sure he'd be happy to tell you about uh, contrabassoons that Mullenauer makes. This is a 1971 model that I've just given a basic overhaul to for its owner, Jarrett Rossini. I thank Jarrett very much for giving me permission to show his horn on YouTube. So overall, this is a beautiful horn. The Mullenauers have a sort of, of this age, have a purple brown color that's very pretty. And I've always thought it looked uh, very regal and it matches the silver quite well. So that's a, a nice, uh, it's a beautiful looking horn, particularly when you shine it up like, uh, like I've done here with this one. Some of the things I don't like about the older Mullenauers are, for example, the left thumb key octave keys. Uh, the rollers are going in the wrong direction uh, from my point of view, and it makes it somewhat difficult to get around on these keys, particularly if they're not adjusted to be the proper height. So I've actually readjusted these octave keys so that they're easier to uh, to press down because you don't have the benefit of the rollers as you go up and down between them. Also, speaking of the left thumb, the octave, the, the lowest keys uh, just to the side of the octave keys are all in a row. And that's unlike you'd see on a regular bassoon or a modern Mullenauer contra bassoon. These older models have all the octave keys in a row. So that's something that's unique about the Mullenauers. The end peg is wonderful, sturdy, and it has indentations in it. So you can, when you sh tighten up the screw, you know it's not gonna slip while you're playing. And I love that about these, uh, these horns. It makes it uh, like you, gives you a nice firm feeling when you're playing, uh, the instrument is rooted to the ground and that's always very nice. One of the problems that you can run into with this horn on the low B and B flat armatures, which are these long pieces of metal that extend these keys over to these notes, um, this is uh, very easy to, to bend because of the way that it's placed. If you place the instrument down on the ground or if you have it in a soft case and you push something against it, these armatures will go out of adjustment very quickly because it's soft metal and it's a big piece of metal. So that is a problem on these older Mullenauers. You can take the horn out of the case and suddenly when you go to press the low notes, they don't close properly. So uh, you'll notice on the newer Mullenauers, they've added another piece of metal between here to sort of brace that and keep that from happening. So use caution if you have a soft case for your older Mullenauer. It really is not great for the key work on these low notes. One other thing about the Mullenauers is the tuning slide should be taken out whenever the, music, the instrument is not in use. And that's because water will collect, uh, condensation will collect in this low U-joint here. And on the first wooden parts of the horn here, that's, there's no plastic liner there. So the, the humidity will get up and cause mold and uh, dry rot up here in this part of the instrument. It's very common. I did take this horn apart and thankfully the wood looks great up there, so that's good. But uh, whenever you're storing your Contra, if it doesn't have the, uh, the plastic liner like the Mullenauers do not have, Make sure you store the instrument with the tuning slide out. Now, Mullenauer redid some of the key working on their instrument about 10 years ago. And what that means is the new horns come standard with a D octave key, a high D octave key, which is great because the older Mullenauers that don't have that, that D is a, is a rough note. So that was good news when I heard that they've added that as standard equipment on the newer horns. This horn and the high Ds can be a little rough sometimes when you're playing them sound of a Mullenauer is a very chocolatey sound. It's a dark and mellow sound um, by, by default. But um, if you want something that's a little brighter, you can get a thinner walled vocal that will brighten that sound up a bit. But this is a Mullenauer vocal on a Mullenauer 1971 contrabassoon. Let's hear a little of the Bach. <laughs> Bye. 
Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave some comments below and we'll see you next time for another Contrabassoon video.